This is Infection, the Survival Podcast, recorded live on Tuesday, April 26th, 2016, episode 67. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Infection, the Survival Podcast. Infection is your source for the latest information on survival video games. We bring you the latest news, reviews, updates, and more each and every week. My name is Nick Craig, at Nicholas M. Craig is my Twitter. InfectionPodcast.com is the website. Joining me for another wonderful week of podcasting, Brian Aldridge. Hey, Brian. A wonderful world of podcasting. A wonderful world of podcasting. Hey, Brian. <laughs> yep. Hey, if you want to find me, go ahead and go to at Boise Computer on Twitter or go to, Infe- uh, well, I can't do, you could do InfectionPodcast.com. I've already done it. Obviously, you're not listening. I. Obviously, you're not listening. Well, yeah. I was going to say you could go there. Yeah, uh, it's fine. But definitely check out BiteUpTech.com um, with an I, of course. On there's links to all all my different things. So uh, we got that one extra member on our Steam group, so we were back at 350. So we should feel feel good. And now, see, now that you said that, we are now going to lose. <laughs> now we're going to have one person leave. And yeah, go down back back to 349. So I guess that, that that's a good. Uh, well, I'm going to say this at the beginning of the show because I feel like we always promote this stuff at the end, and then nobody ever yes. hears it. So yeah, because people quit quit listening about a quarter of the way through. But uh, and so we need to say it now. Uh, ex- well, it's not even that. I think, and I think Brian and I were talking earlier today, and it's like we'll cover stuff like our steam group. And if you get up to use the bathroom or grab a drink or grab something to eat like halfway or th- you know, towards the end of the show, you miss it because we'd covered yeah. in like 30 seconds. So, um, our, our friend land gun and our uh, friend Saul, um, who, if you've ever played with us, you'll know those two names. They are kind of taking over the taking over infection podcast. Um, <laughs> <laughs> next week, they're going to be the only yeah, ones yeah. on the show. Nick and I are going on vacation. Yeah, We're going on vacation. We're going to Malibu. Um, <laughs> they're going to be taking over and, and for a while now Langan and, and, and Saul have been running our Friday night game nights um, but now um, Langan and, and Saul are pretty much going to be doing it ex- uh, setting it up and running it exclusively um, so this is the new now, I'm usually I'm almost I'm usually always there and I'm going to be there more and more much, now as well yeah Langan pretty much will do the live stream and I usually just host it so we'll make it so that he has the ability to put out an event post and you know, promote it and have exactly. it where he has some more access so um this so we're trying this out and we're we're actually planning it out earlier in the week. So um, if nothing changes this week, uh, we're going to be doing an H one Z one King of the Kill night, and that'll and that'll be Friday somewhere between nine and nine thirty Eastern. Um, and what I want you to do is if you're in our Steam group, and well, first of all, if you're not in our Steam group, I want you to join the Steam group. Uh, you can find that at infectionpodcast.com or search for infection uh, in the in the Steam uh, community page. And once you're in there, there's uh, there's an events list, uh, and uh, Langan either today or tomorrow will be adding Friday night's game to that list. So today or tomorrow, you'll see H1Z1 King of the Kill in that list there. Um, so yeah. if, so if you ever miss the show live or we don't mention it on the show, you can go there. Um, and in the case of uh, like next week, uh, there's a there's a plan to do the Overwatch beta. So you can know beforehand to install the Overwatch beta. Yeah, get um, everything get downloaded. This gives you enough heads up to go to whatever site. Because we, we tried to do um, survival the Arc. Fittest. Yeah. Survival of the Fittest. But the problem is it's, what, a 14 gigabyte? I thought it was like a 40 gig download. I, I don't remember. It's big. And so we're telling people a half an hour before, oh, yeah, we're going to do Survival of the Fittest. So they yeah. start their, their downloads. Some people, their Steam downloads are, are stopping and slowing down and pausing. <laughs> It's like, okay, well, some of us got to play it, and then we switch to another game. Yeah, so, so we'll give you enough heads up to where maybe you don't have a 200 megabit internet connection. You can go and have some time to download the game and be ready for it on Friday. Exactly. So the uh, the, the moral of the story is check out the Steam group. Uh, actually, I can – I just closed out of Steam, Actually, but I can pull it back <laughs> up. Um, the, the, the mor- so if you, go to, if you go to our Steam group – let me pull this up really quick here. You can go if you go to the infection. Um, I think it's a group. It's a com- is it a community or a group? It's a group. Okay, it's a group. So if you go to the infection group, let me pull this up here. You will see. Oh, we got another member. So not someone the- is listening and realized they ha- <laughs> are not a member of the. Um, oh, this isn't pulling up, but you, if once. All right. You- so if you go if you go to the infection group and then you'll see events. You go to events and you, it will show in this month because it'll have. Upcoming events and then a category of past events. So just check out the next upcoming event. Right now it says "Come play the game of the week" and it shows it as "King of the Kill." Um, it says, "See, I start Steam. You know, if you want to get on our team, speak." I start Steam. Guess what happens? Arc. Huh? 
I start Steam, Arc starts yeah, it starts downloading. Instantly, instantly. All right, here we go. So I can show this now. So this is this is our Steam group. And like Brian said, you go to events, and what will be... Actually, he's already scheduled it. Um, yeah, it's all scheduled, did, ready to go. Did you shows. do this, or did he do this? No, he actually okay, did Okay, so this is this is already scheduled, folks. So you can go in here, um, and this this was scheduled by, by Langan. So uh, April 29th at 9.30... Um, is, is when we'll be doing this, and you can join the team speak. He'll be streaming, um, and he's got his Twitch channel in here. So every week, and, and I just we're gonna we want to get you into the habit of every week going to the Steam group, going plan, to the yeah, events. Plan on playing games with us on Friday nights. Exactly. So do that, but you can go to the Steam group earlier uh, in the it's week. Much cheaper than going to the bars uh, or going to the movies, for a matter of fact. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Twenty some bucks per person. Yeah, at the exactly. Movies. So you can go in there. You'll see the event. You can get the game downloaded or updated if you need to do so. Um, and we we'll want to thank Langon and uh, and Saul for kind of grabbing that and, and and controlling that. So, just wanted to get that out there um, to start off. Now, um, do we have any? So now, Firebomb I... brought up something. Okay. And I think I know why. Some people were saying like a week ago, two weeks ago, that the podcast stopped downloading. Yeah, that he wasn't the only and one to say. It's because I I installed HTTP two, and it's got to be that those podcast apps aren't updated for the new HTTP2 HTTP, HTTP2 um, protocol. So, which is, a, it's a newer, faster protocol, but it, you know, like these apps probably aren't thinking about well, that. Then he so says, I turned it off today, so now it's working again. Okay, well then I guess. So I, I decided I'm going to turn it off for six months, give the apps time to update. Because hmm. if they don't have HTTP2, Oh say. my god! I can't even say <laughs> HTTP two in six months. Then you know, get a new app. Okay. Sorry. Oh, so that was. Did you do? Yeah, because um, ag- I did that today. Agnostic messaged me too and was like, "Hey, the show's not downloading." And I was like, "It's probably on certain, but yeah, probably on certain ones because if they aren't uh, communicating or aren't able to communicate in HTTP." Oh HTTP. my God, Brian! I don't just, know. Why I can't say it. You H- say it. You T- said it once. Eight. Wait. H T T P two. Yes. H- okay. H T T P two. Okay. So I had an extra T in there. Yeah. So re- so real quick. So real quick. Um, podcast app I recommend. Uh, not affiliated with this company a- at all. Um, use the. Uh, use. Po- po- it's called Pocket Casts or Casts. Yes. It's like three or four dollars. Um. But I would totally recommend it. It's, it. They constantly update it. It'll sync between multiple devices, your start and stop time. So if you had an issue downloading your app um, or downloading the show with the app you use, see if you can find a yeah, different app. Most likely they're using some older app or something, and it's just not been updated in a while. Yeah. Because this is a newer technology. But I, I was like, yeah, I'll just I'll downgrade it for now because – you know, some apps, maybe it takes them a couple months yeah. to update. Or they don't even know so, that it's an issue to be updated They, they may not even realize, you know, all these servers are starting to roll this out now. I mean, it's just becoming a big thing. So Firebomb, so, uh, Firebomb 80, do, do, me, do me and Brian a favor. Go to the website, infectionpodcast.com, and submit a contact request with the name of your app so we can contact the developers and tell them they need to download so, that. So U- Unicorn Joe says he's looking it up. He can't find the HTTP poo uh, protocol. protocol. <laughs> no, no, no app support HTTP poo, uh, unfortunately. No HTTP poo from you. So, Sorry. Uh, yeah, if you have an issue downloading the show, con- Let send us, know, us the name and we'll contact yeah, the company. Yeah, I started getting some, some reports and so I looked into it because I had upgraded my server to that. And it's it because they are coming to the website and downloading it from a direct link from the website, yeah. it is using that. It's okay. not like FTP or anything else. So it is reliant on them understanding how to communicate in the latest protocols. So Gotcha. So uh, we'll work. I mean, well, yes. it, it, over the next couple months, if I see that, you know, there's, we'll turn it on probably at some point for a week and see, see what happens, if people yeah. report. Well, that, that would explain because this week's show did have a lower number of downloads. When did you turn the H the thing like on? Like a week and a half ago. Okay, that would make sense because I did say I was like, God, there's no nobody. There were the downloads were much lower this week. That would explain. And it's it, got to be so. the apps that aren't able to download it, which so is very odd. So now we know. I mean, exactly. you know, I found it today, and I was like, ah, uh, because I noticed it because old Safari versions of Safari couldn't view the website, hmm. couldn't view, uh, and so I was like, okay, it's got to be. And so I tracked it down to that. <laughs> PH poo five. There you go. Yeah. Um, all right. So enough, uh, enough poo and enough tech. Um, we had, and I'm going to, I'm going to give my, uh, Nick Craig seal of approval, probably the best producers update that, 
uh, the best update, not not just the producer's update, because that's kind of a new thing, but the best yeah. update and the most extensive update I think we have ever seen for H1Z1 uh, this past week. And this was a this was a King of the Kill update. But most of these updates, they go they're they're total they're they're two way streets. So it, most of the King of the Kill stuff is is you know just survive and 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 the same thing with the just survive stuff. So this was all about Z2. Which we have yet we have, we haven't heard a lot about in a while. Um, actually, I don't think we've ever heard from anybody officially about Z two actually happening. We've seen some some Reddit comments, but I don't think they've ever actually released anything about Z two. Um, yeah. So this is the well, Z they, they mention it, but they haven't. But they've never they elaborated on so what. Remember, Z2 they had that is. video showing here is us making the terrain. Yeah. <laughs> you know, of the original map, it was just the terrain that was in that um, pr uh, train producer like yeah. generator. Uh, you know, and that shows it's pretty early when he was placing a lake in the terrain and that's what he was showing. That shows that nothing had been placed yet at that point because yeah. he wouldn't be placing a lake on a live stream. I mean, that shows you that was the beginning of Z2. Exactly. As far as the actual map, you know, they may they, what you see in a lot of these things is them making portions that maybe they'll place on the map, but the map wasn't made. Exactly. So this is so so some information on Z two. This is going to be which. So this is oh so, this is going to take a while to go through this producer update. So the first thing I don't understand is okay. they say that Z two will be in both King of the Kill and Just Survive, but yeah. King of the Kill is coming to consoles this year, spring of twenty six or it was spring or summer or fall of twenty sixteen. Some so sometime in twenty sixteen they re referenced. H, uh, King of the Kill coming to consoles. That was a when they that was part of the game split. That was part of it. That this will be in beta yeah. and on consoles, in uh, in either the the summer or the fall or something like that. So, how is Z two going to be in that game if it's already, it's not going to be out by the summer, because it's a whole map. Yeah. So, how, so that's the first thing to understand. But that that's irrelevant. So, um, well, and the thing is, is they want to get the whole map done before they release it because. If they do it piecemeal, it's two. What is it? Two point nine right now. It's two point nine gigabytes, gigabytes per yeah. map, or you know, per update. So whenever they, even if they make a small change to the map, that's a two point two point nine gigabyte yeah. download. Well, I'm hoping that when they're building this map, they maybe they have a different way of deploying the map, so they don't have to export the entire terrain. Yeah, if they could get it to where it's not the whole terrain, because right now they change a building layout at all. It's they a move, huge they move so a they're pebble. not going to want to yeah. be doing, oh, this week we did these updates because every week you're going to have a 2.9 plus, however big it is at that point, download. Yeah. So it would get it would become a headache. Exactly. So this is the um, this is the so the Z2 map is going to be eight kilometers by eight kilometers of playable space. Um, and it, it's going to have its it's it's going to have its typical the trees, mountains, lakes, rocks, so on and so forth. And then they cover what the um, the process is. So the, there's a bulleted list on here. So I'm going to go through these. So the first thing is generating th the terrain, which um, which we saw in that live stream. But that that may that's probably changed. That was before this new game producer came in. Um, that may have changed. So the first thing is yeah. is generating the terrain. Then the next thing is uh, a point of interest population. So then they go around. The, once they have a terrain, then they put the points of interest on the map. If there's five points of interest, they place those down in various spots. Then they do the player spawn and loot population, where they spawn the players and spawn the loot, um, and then they actually build. Uh, they do the building layout and design, so the inside of the buildings and how those are going to lay out, so on and so forth. Um, and then once they have the buildings done, they'll do the city layout and design, laying out the cities, adding the roads, bus stops, signs, lights, so on and so forth. Um, then they'll do an art pass on the terrain because the terrain at this point is literally just going to be terrain. It's probably just going to be gray. Uh, a mesh or it's all going to be green or something like that. There's not going to be any art on it. Yeah, it's it's going to be just a very generic, probably pattern yeah, that's look, laid across. Kind of exactly. like what it is right now. Yeah, probably. I mean, they're probably going to go through and then saying, okay, well, we want to have it be more of like a road that has curvature here, yeah. you know, like a path. Stylizing like is that. kind of irrelevant at this point. It doesn't really matter. Um, so that's they'll do the art the pass on the terrain. Then they'll do uh, a tree pass and put some trees in there. Um, art pass on building. Then light. Uh, a lighting pass and then optimization. So if if I had to guess, I would say we are at the point uh we're at point three or four, which would be spawn and loot population and building layout and design. If I had now, to how are they gonna do spawn and loot 
population before building layout and design as far as they're probably saying now well, they, okay with with the building layout and design are they just placing the buildings themselves and not making them look habitated no they are because the, because that building layout and design how are you going to put loot in a building that's not there yet well the the, the i think what they're going to do i think there's i mean there's loot that's not in buildings there's loot that's lying on the ground yeah, but I mean, then they're going to have to do it twice. Yeah, I mean, what they, which maybe, they will. Maybe those are kind of in the same step and they just put them in that order. Because that, that would make no sense that you'd be put, making the building layout and the city layout yeah, that before seemed a little you put odd. the spawn um, of the loot. But I would say I'd say they're at the point where they're probably doing... I would say they're probably into buildings at this point. I would assume. I have no information to support that. That is total speculation. Um, but if I, I mean, had, Most of what we see is them doing either city layout as far as blocks. Yeah. Um, you know, they're, they're kind of on this test map, making a city block and I assume exactly. they're going to take that, move it over. Okay. Here's a city block. Yeah. Because it's tough for them to work on a huge map because they're having to sync these files to all these different computers and it gets to be a, it could be a very big mess trying to work on all these at once. So I'm assuming yeah. that's why they're like, okay, your department's going to work on this piece. When you're ready, we'll put it in the main design, test it, make sure everything's good. But it, you know, it's for efficiency. Exactly. So that is, um, that's what's going on with, uh, with Z2, um, in the, in the producer update. And then they talk about the, how the whole point, how the whole point of interest thing will work. Um, so on and so forth. Um, you, if you, if you're really interested in this stuff, go read it. Um, I don't want to just kind of regurgitate it cause I'm sure most people have already checked that out. Um, then they talk, then there was an ignition, uh, test, uh, la last weekend, um, this was released on the 20th, so on Wednesday. So they did an ignition test last week. Because they did one a, a number of weeks ago. Yeah, a few, few so probably is, four weeks ago. So now they're doing their final test run. So they were doing the final yeah. test run of ignition. So. Um, and then they talked about uh, cameras in combat. Um, the same stuff we've already talked about. There's nothing new with cameras in combat. It's and then, kind of repeating. Just because they haven't put it in yet, they keep talking about it. Exactly. Um, <laughs> Some and, of these things, so... And then the um, then the, then there's the uh, then there's something that we'll cover later. Um, and then, so then the recent bug fixes um, is cameras as they, as they talked about before, which we've already talked about. Um, hit longers, uh, I'm sorry, hit longers, hit markers hit longers. should no longer appear when hitting a door. Um, so you won't get a hit marker when you hit a door. Uh, parachutes should get stuck on objects uh, much less frequent, uh, much less frequently now than they did in the past. Uh, you should no longer take damage at the end of the parachute sequence, which I really have not noticed. Have we seen? But I haven't noticed that. Th that's at yeah. this point, it's a must be a very, uh, it must be a very small issue. I don't think it's issue. full damage. It must be just a slight amount of damage because I've not seen people dying. Well, I think it. I bet you. It, I bet you it depends anymore. what object you land on, how you land on it. Because I have yeah. not. Taken I think when you hit a yet. house, sometimes it does give you a exactly. little bit of damage, or it did. And I'm, and they've probably figured that out. And then they added a UI option to autofill your team in the two and five man BR matches. Um, so there you go. That's, um, so now, okay. So is this saying that now you don't have to have five people? No, auto, what's no, on, no I, it's saying auto no, fill. That would not be. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. If you, if you go in with, um, three people into a five man, is this having a checkbox that says, I want you to auto fill the rest of the slots. Or if you uncheck it, oh. hmm. are you able to go in with three people? Possibly. Like we've been asking for. Yeah, that might be it. But it says it added a UI option, not a game option. Doesn't that That's seem... what I'm saying, though. They no. probably hmm. added a checkbox to do this. I mean, we'll have to try it this Friday. Yeah, we'll try it this uh, Actually, I don't even think this is out yet. Um, I don't think it's not even out yet, so we can't even try it. They this said yet. in the next few weeks. Okay, yeah. well, they don't have it out by then. Um, but, but I'm, is, is that it, though? That's kind of what I'm thinking is that this is you being able to go in and do a BR match with less than the people so you don't have to wait in the queue. Hopefully, possibly, without I, picking up randoms. Yeah, I I would think so, but but I can't. I can't Hopefully, say for we'll sure. see. Yeah, it's it, speculation. It, it's total speculation. Um, now the next, so that one of the things in the producer update was the new crate, um, and this is, uh, it's called extreme the zombie extreme zombie wrestling. zombie ra <laughs> zombie wrestling wrestling um, easy w yeah easy w. So they're going they're going all out like WWE on this, and I'm sure WWE fans are loving this. Um, so this is, but these images look so stupid on the cover. It's like they're all. It's the same pose, like they're yeah. just ah uh, extreme. <laughs> it, it's extreme. 
it's it's just it doesn't really make any sense. Um and then we've got a picture from our, our good friend Gadlaw here. Gadlaw, yeah. Who uh, there's some emotes. There's the power pose emote. Uh, listening to the crowd, which is the big like WWE thing, you know, get them chanting your name. Uh, there's a the, some other cool stuff on here. Is the championship belt, um, and that's about it. There, there's there's some other just like kind of odd stuff. That, like nobody who like I don't know who's gonna win the pink. Wear the pink. No, it zebra seems like they're kind of stealing from old some old wrestlers. Wrestler, yeah. Who's the the so, mouth so of the south was, is that? There's a uh, there was. Macho Man. Macho Man Randy Savage. Rand, Randy Savage. He's yeah. that hat, right? No. Is is he that hat? I don't know. Yeah, I swear he's that hat. All right. Um, Nacho Dude is that kind of mocking on um, Hulk? I, I don't know, but uh, the... Uh, I, I'm just thinking from these old ones. Like these Mouth are, of the South. Sa- yeah, but isn't Jimmy Hart the one that wears the, the pink cowboy hat? Um, I'm not sure. Hold on. Mouth of the South. I, I, I'm so per- Macho Man Randy Savage... He wore hats like that. Okay. He he wore hats. They weren't necessarily pink. Um, who were you thinking of? Jimmy Hart. No, Jimmy Hart didn't wear a hat. No, he was just no, insane. no, it no, it wasn't Jimmy Hart. So if you look at Macho Man, he would wear hats like ridiculous okay. hats like this. So oh, I swear go. that that's where they're getting this whole concept of this. And I thought it was. I mean, if you look at that shirt, it has somewhat of resemblance to the whole or Hulk Hogan. There you go. So, um, this will be in there. Um, uh, I'm just not, I, I mean, personally. Okay. So I should, I sent you, I sent you an image. Oh, do you have that? That helmet. It'll be in steam. So let me pull it up. Yeah. Cause that's where I sent it to you. Right? No, you sent it to me on Skype. I mean, sorry, not Steam. Yeah. Skype. Um, throw it in the show notes. So I, PHVCK, I don't get it. I I think that sums it up perfectly. Um, it would have been, you know, it would have been cool if they actually worked with the WWE and got some, like, real... Some actual some assets, actual, like paid some licensing fee. Yeah, to get some, like, real, you know, to, to, put a, to put some, like, real wrestling shit in the game. Like, it would have been cool to have, like... Like a Hulk Hogan, Hulk Hogan on a T-shirt, like that. That would have been cool for for the licensing. Re- would have expen- been expensive. Uh, yeah, but I mean, I'm sure they. C- well, this isn't the one from them, is it? Oh, that's mm-hmm. okay. So I so see. They, so what I was saying is that that hat to me looks like. So they I mean, added this. Wanna... They added this spiked hat thing right here, um, this spiked helmet, and then Brian send, sends me this image. Which what what did you search on Amazon to find this? What is this? That's from Star Wars. Oh, is it okay? It's one. Yeah, it's one of the sand people. Remember, I'm not a Star Wars fan. So I know. There you, well, <laughs> there you go. It's just so. I mean, for me, I look at that. It's like, come on. And <sighs> this. They're, they're, but they're go, they're going for like the Mad Max feel, but this is the only thing in the map that really looks like that. I I just like, really I, wish. My complaint to you when we were talking about this is that. Everything is just so non-flowing. <laughs> it's just everything is so hit and miss. They got all these random colors. People run around, and it's like, it's like when a five-year-old tries to dress themselves. You know what I'm saying? It's, you ever seen a little kid dress themselves? Yeah, for the th- first there's time? no, there's no layout. It's just like I want. It's like how it's like how I dress myself. Like. <laughs> I'll, I'll wear like red shorts and like a like a black t- uh, not even black but like a like a Xbox orange or a, not an orange green like neon green T-shirt. It just it doesn't make any sense. Um, and it's all fake. Like none of this like no, it's like none of this stuff is even cool. Like yeah. I guess if you're the only thing that's cool, if I, I, that I think is the wrestling belt, that's actually cool. Because that's a, that's a, that's a unique thing, which that's going to take the spot of the um, the pouch. Um, you'll be able to skin the pouch with that. But other than that, it's just more uh, more tights with, with skins on them. Um, more more luchador max, uh, luchador masks. Yeah, exactly. More combat boots, gloves. It's so it's where all the where same. are like the um, where are the heavier coats and like the the longer coats the the trench coats and things like that that's when anyways it, the ones that actually have a different look to them from a distance um you know what i'm saying like those yeah. are things they promised a long time ago well isn't there there is a been the same type of, of there's not like a long trench coat 
No, um, there isn't one of the motorcycle jackets long, or isn't there a long uh, like motorcycle thing? Um, I'm looking. I don't. I don't think so. Okay. So I mean, I, I, I don't remember ever seeing anything that's that's long. I mean, in all their concept art, they showed all these things of, of trench coats and all these different things. So, like for example, this seen any of them yet. This is the thing that doesn't make any sense. This is the it, this is the extreme zombie wrestling. Yet one of the pictures is one of the skins is barbed wire res, barbed wire tights. Like there's it's just it's just it's just purple tights with green paint spattered on them. Yeah. And they say, but they throw wrestling on it. But it's, uh, there's no theme. I mean, there's just no well, theme. Okay. My complaint is that they're destroying the whole image of, of, I look at it as next year, when you go in this game and you're playing this in a year, what is, what are people going to look like? Like, you got to look at what do we want the game to feel like and look like in a year when we've released all these skins. There's just going to be a little bit of everything. It's like you need to have an art flow, an art direction to where you say, I mean, look at Mad Max. It's a perfect example, whether it's the movies. Like what made that movie was a lot of how they portrayed the characters, the villains had a certain look to them. And just there was an overall feel for the whole movie or even the game. Uh, on this, it's just like there's no feel. Like there's no overall feel of even the buildings, of the landscape, um, you know, of of the vehicles. Like they're just things that, that they threw in there. And at some point, like what are they going to do to pull this back? They're they're hitting a point of no return by throwing so much junk into this that eventually how are they going to get it back and try to get a little bit of art direction when they've thrown all these skins that now they can't take back from people? Like how are they going to take any of these back? People have paid money for some of these skins. Yeah, They're stuck with them. I mean, they're looking at the instant money, like, oh, we're going to get money from these. We got to think, like, in a year from now, it's just going to be such a mess. You know, like, you're not doing seasons or anything. Like, these skins are just going to be a bunch of everything. So, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, that's my complaint. I just wish that they would... I, I just don't know what they can do anymore. I, I, I don't know how they can change it. Yeah. I... Ah... <sighs> The, uh, so it's just yeah he's it's so, just like, um, I, I don't I don't understand Party it. Rocker he put in a link to um, a parka render that they did so it was a work in progress so this was two six of sixteen so this was a couple months ago so this is what I'm talking about like they've shown that these are going to be in there but they've never released anything like this Can yet you post that in the notes yeah poor, so poor favor let me get the right I just age if they want. It, it's just the skins. It just doesn't. And I get that King of the King of the Kill is supposed to be like a fun arcadeish style, um, but it, it's it, it's just insane. Like it, it's just there is so much garbage for skins that it just doesn't. Like the electric pants, they're just black with blue lines that look like lightning bolts. And you can't even see them. Like it's not it, the the models are so low resolution, and from a distance, everybody's just a freaking block. It's it's it, the stuff's not even cool. Like if you ever so, skin something, no, if you something, look at that work, if you look at that work in progress, I I do everything camo. So if you look at this yeah, work that's in for, progress, yeah. So if you look at this, this for me, like that is better. I, I like that. Like that is something that I would I would skin every time because first of all, it covers my arms. So I don't, people don't see me from a distance having a bright color. Um, it, it changes your, your outline against the horizon. See what I'm saying? Like yeah. that to me makes sense that if they were going for survival, like skins that all had that feel would be perfect. But the problem is you go into survival and now you have all these wrestling skins along with that. So you're never going to get the feel of a survival game where everything is like that. Wrestling. You're never going to get that back. No, you're not. Um, Unless they, they redo all the skins for Survive and and say, okay, we're going to replace your skin with this, but look at how much work they have to do now. They've tossed yeah. out so many skins, they'd have to redo a ton. And people aren't going to be happy that they lost those skins, that they paid 50 bucks for on some trade. Totally. Um, so. 
So that's um that that's the update that's the updated with the the crates um in the producer update. Now they did do a uh, a just survive um update for the test server. Yeah. Um and so there's a few things that they did in here. Uh the first one is uh the animal traps do no longer uh animal traps do not decay. So added decay to rabbit traps. Um and they actually that doesn't even make any sense. Um does that it says animal traps do not decay and then it says animal traps decay to rabbit traps. Oh okay. Well added de- uh, that doesn't make it. So now the the rabbit traps will decay in about two and a half days. Um if you don't repair them or something like that. So they'll decay and 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 go away. Uh corn mash and moonshine name mix-ups uh fix so that that's fixed now. Uh metal bars were too bulky so they reduced uh the metal bars are previously 50 bulk. They've now reduced them down to 25 uh bulk. Uh, workbench crafting radius was too large, which was a great advantage. Um, I remember, Brian, I don't know if you were part of this. When we when we started playing again, um, we had that little shack, and we had the workbench like all like, uh, like against a tree, and our base was like yeah. away, but we could still craft from inside so to we the workbench inside. So we would stick the crafting bench underneath the base. Yeah, that was a good so one, too. Can, yeah, yeah, so you could stand anywhere in the base and craft. And craft, yeah. Um, which you, you can't even be pissed that that's gone. Um, yeah. cause it's, that's like a, it's like a bug. It shouldn't even be like that. Um, but that was, it. that's, um, that's that. And then other than that, so um, borscht doesn't stack. So borscht is what a soup. I, I, it's, like a I, I beast, uh, it's a beet soup, a Russian beet is, soup. Is that what it is? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. It's like, so that was there, you know, one of the fixes uh, it now stacks. I never even noticed that it didn't stack. Let's see. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm distracted. I just thought I just pulled up something last minute. Um, so other, then, uh, so that now that so that and then, um, sorry, I'm all over the place. Repairing vehicles <laughs> uh, is not where I just I thought of something that we need to reference, and I was trying to get the okay. Link. Um, so repairing repairing vehicles is is not working correctly. Um, it should now be more so reliable the, now. So they fixed that. Um, and now and they it, made it so that deer scent lasts ten minutes now rather than eighteen seconds. That's quite a. Uh, but that's a huge change yeah, so it quite a be, quite a bit of a change you, you would go deer hunting and you'd have to apply one every time you went and killed a deer which is totally a waste of resources yeah and it's not even worth doing it's just there's there's no point of doing it um yep. now the the it's a, this says there was a so this is what i was going to get into the blackberry eating issue um so yes. the, the, the timer for eating a blackberry was reduced uh, to half a second instead of four, and a new recipe is also added. Ten blackberries can be crafted into a handful of berries. And to show this off, um, our buddy Killcam uh, put did a little video showing this off, and he kind of talks about bulk. Um, so I'm just gonna play his little uh, clip here, where he talks it. He covers, you know, the, when he his setup when he leaves the base or whatever, and how yeah. carrying a bunch of berries at, at X bulk um, makes it different. So we're going to roll into that uh, now, and then we'll, uh, we'll be right back. These changes last night after the test servers were updated. First up, there's a new crafting recipe coming into the game. Handful of blackberries. Ten blackberries combined to make one handful of blackberries. On the surface, doesn't seem like a big deal, right? Wrong. The bulk rating of a handful of blackberries as it currently stands on test servers is 1. You gain the benefit of a 20% increase to energy and hydration, all in a tiny one bulk package. If you're like me and never leave your base without a rabbit, without rabbit meat and bottles of water, that represents major space saving. To gain the same benefit of carrying, say, 3 rabbit meat and 3 bottles of water at 120 bulk, you would only need to carry 6 handfuls of blackberries at a grand total of six bulk. When you're running around, so that I mean that that's the 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 main point of that video. But that's massive that you can now instead of carrying ten for one, t- uh, uh, ten for ten bulk, you're now carrying yeah. ten for one bulk, which is the premise of the video. So, um, thanks, Kilcam, for for putting that video together. And there'll be a link in the show notes um, to to watch it. He talks about some of the other stuff too. Um, now, this next one is something that I have said for one year now. I think. Okay. I think it's been a year that I said, why are they not doing this? You can now get scrap metal from an empty canned food. So when you eat a canned food, it gives you one scrap metal. Remember, 
a year ago when I said, how come when you eat a canned food you don't get and it's in back. a metal can, you don't get a piece of scrap metal back? Yeah. This makes no sense to me. I have a can. Why can't, why isn't this scrap metal? Yeah. That, and it's... they finally, they finally added that in. So, so th this is, this is very, those two things are very significant. The, yeah. the, the Blackberry thing is huge. As far as the crafting, I, like for bulk and crafting, like for you to get scrap metal, that can be used to make uh, like, uh, like arrows, right? There's a couple different things you can make from that well, that it's just, are a pain in the Well, it's just the know, whole point. The whole point is now, um, and, and Kilcam covers this in his video too, I would never pick up cans of food. You just yep. run by them because it's just not even worth the inventory space. Um, but that, but that's totally changed now that you'll get a scrap. Um, now the thing that's, I don't think it should be every time you eat a, a canned food because you could go to Romero's and pick up five, six, seven cans of food and instantly yeah. turn that into scrap. Um, I it should be like a fifty-fifty shot of getting a scrap or not getting a scrap if you had. I, I, I think this is going to be tweaked because I think it's a little OP, to be honest with you. I feel like... Well, I, I mean, think I about, mean, think about what you do. Scrap metal isn't a huge thing. It's not... It's it's a scrap metal, which is the smaller... Yeah, like, it is. Shark, it's, not right? a, it's, not a, it's not a sheet, but it's... If you go... if you Especially if unless item uh, spawns are, are properly working, I mean, you could find six or seven cans in a location if nobody's been there. I think that's a little... I think that's a little OP. Um, yeah. But that, that, that could just be me, so... Uh, we'll see, but the the blackberries and this can thing are huge. Yeah, very, very, very big updates. Um, the next thing on this uh, list, besides those two things, are um, allow destruction of player crafted items, uh, which isn't in a base. So now punji sticks. So can this damage. is now on PVE servers. Yeah. So this because punji sticks would be placed places now. Punji sticks can now be damaged on PVE servers. When not on a foundation, so if you don't put, if they don't have the punji sticks on their foundation, let's say, well, that was the problem. They bo box off every single everywhere. building. They're yeah. not doing damage to you, but they're just placed everywhere. Yeah, because they would just pretty they're much building. box off every single building um, with 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 punji sticks, so you couldn't get into any of them. Um, yeah, so, so that's that, they've made that change. And then uh, quest loot appearing as world loot. So um, quest so they military were having, scrubs. Because there was like a, they did they mention here the quest military scrubs. They were spawning in the military base when they weren't supposed to because they were supposed to be part of a quest reward. So they made it so that now they, they took them out so they don't just spawn randomly at the military base because I don't think they were supposed to. Gotcha. Um, so cold medicine description was inaccurate. That's been updated. Uh, the barbecue was bugged and you can't ignite it after a while. That's been fixed. Uh, charcoal burn time. Uh, so now it's set to a 40-minute uh, burn time for the charcoal instead of unlimited. And then modified, of course, another great skin, the AK-47 Toxic Skin. Um, that can actually be repaired now. And then um, you can now drop the modded AK-47 from the weapon slot. So, well, see, they word these so... No, it's, the, it, no, it, no, it's not. It, it says you... They said they fixed that you cannot drop modded AK-47 from so, weapon so slot. So now you can. That's the whole so now thing. Now you can. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like... No, it didn't. It didn't make sense say, when we're I read. Not able to drop wep modded AK-47. No, because what they're doing, it, if you look at it, it's bold. The issue is bolded, and then the solution is like, when I read I know, the first sometimes one. Sometimes they'll put something that they're putting the problem, but sometimes you read that as here's what they did. No, well, it's not it, what they did. The, the, it's what the problem was. And the that, way they word it is just horrible. Yeah, the first one kind of screwed me up because I didn't understand what they were trying to do uh, with the animal yeah, traps. The, the, but the, the, that's the thing is they say, oh, for instance, take that that sentence where they say. Quest loot appearing as world loot items. That's that's like a statement that that's what you're doing now. Yeah. No, it's not. <laughs> They're saying, oh, that's what it was doing. Yeah. Now we're going to do that. Once you read one, you understand it. It, uh, it doesn't bother me. Once you read the first one and understand what they're trying to do, it makes perfect sense. Um, and they just need to write it in a way that... There's more issues. Child can understand. Mm, there you go. So you don't yeah. have to sit there and try to figure out what they're saying. Oh. Just put, no, we fixed this. We'll never be happy. This was a problem. Yeah, it just it's odd to me. So now you, um, and the, you said the, you said for Nick, and it's the same link. I don't know what the what the, what the uh, difference is here. I had put in there. It uh, actually it was supposed to scroll down. I put a link. I thought to a comment. We can skip that. Okay. Now. Um. Now Brian, being the funny guy that he is, um, decided he was going to coin some new terms. So. Go ahead, well, Brian. I was, I was going through Reddit, and I just keep seeing these problems 
and they all seem like conspiracies because everybody says, are you guys doing this on purpose? So first we got our hat gate, right? This is a big one. So a hat gates where they had, they made it. So all hats had the same blocking ability as helmets, which they changed it in that way in survival. So people could just pick up a hat. It's exactly the same as wearing a helmet. And so people were freaking out about that. Why would, why are you making blanket changes if these are supposedly separate games? First of all, they're not treating them like separate titles. Um, and so, the, and so they went through and did, now they've rolled back the change of making it. So hats do blocking. And I understand why they're doing blocking in King of the Kill. I mean, that's fine. If you want it to be where, you know, it's just a, a, a PVP shooter. Um, sure. Make it so hats and everything. So you can look however you like, if you want to skin your hat and have some ridiculous looking thing that doesn't, isn't an actual helmet skin. Now you can look however ridiculous you want to in this, right? It's not limiting the skin. Yeah. That's what they're worried about. Um, so, but in survival, if you have a hat, it's not going to stop a bullet. I mean, I'm sorry. No, no, I'm hat sorry. It's not going to stop a bullet the first time. So, um, so this is something that they've kind of said, oh, whoops, you know, we've, we've undo the, undid this. And then I go down and now we got bomb gate. So people are freaking out about how when you get down to two people in the very center of the smoke, now they're having bomb drops that are killing people randomly in the last however many minutes. And a little deja vu for you? Yes. I mean, <laughs> this is something that frustrates me because I I have run into this too many times. Um, so So this, yeah, this was definitely a problem bomb gate so then now supposedly they're going to turn off bombs in when there's down to two people in the final little circle where you can't really get away from the bombs right yeah no you can't because you'll die from the gas if you try to get away from the bombs. yeah if so. you try to run away from the bombs you're, you're gonna get killed anyways um and then we got zombie gate where people are saying all right on my server i ran for 15 minutes and i found one zombie you know what's going on and people are like well it's probably the population of your server well why would a low population server have no zombies yeah you know what I'm saying? Like, just put zombies out there. Because if it's low population, they don't have anything else to do. Let them go kill zombies. Why are you making it so that low population servers have even less reason to play? Yeah. Why don't you have a high population server and a low population zombie server? You know, mix it up. So if people want to have a high population, why are you basing it totally? I know they're doing it for performance because they're worried if you have too many players and, and they're trying to match it. I, it just doesn't make any sense. I mean, maybe they're saying that high population server has less zombies because of uh, lag, but that's not what the way the person was wording it. They were running, saying that they were running around on a low population server and no zombies. So it should be the opposite. Um, and then you got shotgun gate where people are now saying again, that the shotgun is doing no damage that they, that they run up to somebody, they shoot them point blank uh, and they can't kill people with a shotgun. So it's just like all these problems that are, this is when you go along Reddit, like these are the top things and just frustrating. You figure they could fix these things and they are fixing these things, but like these are huge problems that should have been caught in the test. Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. You would think, right? I mean, isn't that the whole point of a test? Yeah. So <laughs> PHVCK says shotguns will be removed in the next, uh, removed in the next patch that, you know, if they can't fix it, because that's what I keep hearing. Like, I keep hearing on, on Reddit, all right, the logic is if we can't fix it, we'll remove it and we'll add it back in six months <laughs> rather than fix the problem. Or you know, or they'll do a fix that just is the wrong blanket change. Yeah. Now, I put in here as the last thing. If you think you can fix these problems for them, Daybreak is hiring. So if you look at their list, they actually are hiring a lot of people for H1Z1. So if you say, I could do this better, and if you really think you could, then... Go check out a job at Daybreak because they they have programmers, um, UI designers, everything. Daybreak.com, uh, daybreakgames.com forward slash careers with an S. Um, yes. They've, they're actually hiring a lot of people. Um, yeah. They've got 26 it, total pages, job openings. Yeah. Two pages worth and a lot of those are. Now, Brian, I got a great job for you. You ready for this? Uh, okay, Senior product manager, monetization and economy for H1Z1. Making like, a little what do money. you do all day? Make a little. You're trying to figure out how to make money. Yeah, but, but you're like how, you're you're trying to keep the economy of the game up to where your things are still worth something. Yeah, that give people a reason to buy them. Plus, or you could be uh, player retention and growth. I think that would be a good title for you as well. Then every time I have to say, "Oh yeah, this game is working perfectly," you need to come play it. <laughs> that would be my job to say that. 
This, there's nothing. There's nothing wrong. Nothing to see here. <laughs> nothing to see here. Everything is good. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, All right. So yeah, more skins will fix the problem. God yeah. bless us. Um, more so, skins. Player more retention. Skins. When in doubt. Um, so that's that's Daybreak, uh, and that's H1Z1. Now, PAX East was uh, this weekend, and yes. um, th- there 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 wasn't anything too fantastic there. Um, I wasn't seeing any announcements. It was mostly look at the game we already have announced. Yeah, I may have missed if somebody in chat's got anything from PAX East. There was so much news; it was it was impossible to keep on top. I I really tried, um, but it was kind of hard to keep on top of. But I do want to show this off. This was the Arc booth. Um, and uh, this is this is a, a, a not, I was gonna say a real life dinosaur. Um, <laughs> real life dinosaur. Yeah, get on it. Yeah, real, li- yeah, real life dinosaur. Um, you could uh, there's like a, a ladder. You could step on top of this thing and sit on the saddle. I saw the. Yeah, the, and they'll take a picture of you on top of a huge T Rex, which is cool. I would have totally got my picture taken on top of that. Um, and I actually, uh, it'd be funny if both of us were sitting up there. I thought about that. and I was like, that would have been a little odd. Um, <laughs> it's, one of those pictures you instantly regret. Yeah, afterwards. it's it's it would have like, been oh yeah, it would have been very. very this, yeah. this is not going off the it internet. Would have been very uncomfortable. Um, yeah, I would have had like my hand on your shoulder. It so would have been hilarious <laughs> though. It would have been hilarious. It would have been pretty funny. Um, but people would have never let us live it down. Yeah, maybe, maybe in the future. Um, and then they had this arc, uh, like the arc logo with the LEDs and stuff. Um, with so, a little building. Yeah. So this was their PAX East uh, booth and. They had um, a pretty big PAX East booth. I yeah, mean, and, I'm assuming compared to the rest of them, that was a pretty big pretty Yeah, big so, um, and then they did a big survival of the fittest tournament. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, so th- th- that was ARC's PAX East stuff. And um, I was talking to Langan about that that dinosaur, and he said it's yeah. made out of uh, it's big pieces of foam, and then they, they chisel they it out. it together, yeah. yeah. And he said that's probably ten to $15,000 worth of, of foam. So the foam is yeah. over a thousand dollars a piece. Well, and if you look, land gun, this is the kind of stuff he makes. Yeah, yeah. This is like have you ever the, looked into what he does. Like, yeah, yeah. I have. Kind of stuff I, yeah, this make. is this is. I mean, he he would he would know about this. That this is part of his career. Um. So unless somebody paid for that, that's an that's going to be a cool um thing in their office. I would imagine. Yeah, they need, they need to have a huge office. And yeah, or bring this to people. Pax East next year, or Pax Prime, or whatever Paxes they're yeah. going to. Um. So that is. Uh, and they let and they had a place on their website where. People could, you know, they took pictures of everybody. So they posted today a place. If you did get your picture taken, go find yourself and you can download a picture. Gotcha. Um, now, there's some news in here that's a little, uh, it, it doesn't match up with what, we're, what we've been hearing in the past. So this is a headline from Engadget. And it reads, "Arc Survival Evolved mod, uh, so become part of, will become part of our, the main game. So they are adding Survival Evolved um, the mods back into the main game because they some took of them because they took them so, out when they split off. No, 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 no. So this is different. So they, okay, so let me, let me explain what they're doing. So they're taking the most popular, kind of like what they did with Survival of the Fittest. Okay." They're taking some of the most popular mods and they're integrating them so that they're an option in the main game. So you don't have to download the Survival Plus mod. You can load your game and have it be Survival Plus. You know what I'm saying? Or if you join a Survival Plus server, it is now a game mode that's not a separate mod that you have to go to Steam and click subscribe to. It is because it's so popular, or sorry, Primitive Plus. Because it's so popular... Um, they're, they're integrating these. Now, the question is, and I saw them ask this in here, are they paying these guys, like, are they getting something for now integrating something they made for free into this company's I, I, game? I doubt it. Um, they, I know, probably not, but no, should they? No, no, here, no, and I don't think, no, and here's but, the but reason they're going to be expected to keep it up, though. The, the, here's the problem. They integrate it into the game. Now that mod provider is forced to keep it up. No, they're not. It. They're not. If no. is 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 the, you know, is the main company for Arc going to take over and keep that mod up to date? Are they taking it away from the company? I don't think, or from the group. Um, I don't think so. No, I, I'm not sure what they're going to do. But I, I'm, if you if you are making, you know, Brian, if you decide you want to make a mod for a game and they want to incorporate it, that that would be the company's responsibility to to handle that mod and, and deal with it. Not yours, and and it, it, some companies make. It would not surprise me if if um 
wild card compensates these people. Um, but, but that's the thing is like primitive plus was is extremely po- extremely popular. Yes. If they're taking it away from them, they're taking away something that they've made and worked really hard on all the assets and everything. They're taking away from those people, no longer letting them. But is that it. not is that not the goal of creating a mod to get it in, introduced no. into the main game? Not for everybody. Some people enjoy the. Well, I'm sure they're game. asking the people, "Can we add your mod to the game?" And they're saying yes. Um, yeah, but I just I, I would and if say, not and if not, this you know, creates a really weird situation. No, I don't think it does. I mean, here's the thing: you're what built about, like survival of the finest. That was a mod. So yeah, but, but here's the thing: you you develop a mod for their game. They allow you to mod their game, and that if they want to take elements of your mod or your mod and implement it, first I don't. I mean, yeah. I don't think they I mean, owe you anything. Good is a good thing. Exactly. I, just, I mean, I don't know I mean, why you would some develop. Some people are going to get upset. Some people are going to get upset that first their their thing that they're working on was they're no longer working on, and that. But then you're going to have the other group of people that are like, "Man, this is totally cool. What we made is put in the game." Like, I think that's the I think that's the end goal of making I'm a mod. I'm just wondering, you know. Someone's going to be upset either way. Whichever I'm not sure. I'm choose. not sure if somebody will be upset, but I don't. I just don't think. I I don't. If I developed a mod, I don't think I would be pissed off that they are implementing into the game and taking it away from me. Then I would go and work on a new mod. That I mean, I think that's the whole. Isn't that the whole point of building a mod? You build a modification, like how people build. Uh, you know, uh, start up a company. And you start up a company in hopes of getting acquired by Google or. Or, uh, or Apple or, or Microsoft or somebody like I think this is the same thing. You're developing this mod. Okay, so I, I have experience with this. <laughs> we made Hangout Canopy. Yeah. It, it was taken away from us. Yes. By Google. Were we happy about that? Not necessarily. Uh, so you you, the, you had no intention of giving, you know, you had no intention of Google implementing They your... shut us down and they started their own. Yes. But, yeah, but that's, the... not, that's not what we wanted. Yeah, I guess they didn't it's just... even warn us beforehand. They shut it off overnight. But, but that was before. That was after you were already war. They acquired you and you were no, working. No, they hired for us it. after that. Ah, uh, yeah. I don't know. You know what I'm saying like, there's just I I understand. Maybe that's why I'm more sensitive to this. Like, there's a way to do it, and I'm just wondering, you know, how did they come across this? And you know, they either they told those guys you're no longer working on your mod and we're taking it over, or they're saying, hey, you guys. We want you to maintain this, and now they're obligated to. If so, they should be giving them. If they're if they're having sort of them, yes, for yes, it. of course. If they're having to update their mod, then, um, then of course compensation it, it would be necessary. But, I, I if if I developed a free mod for a game and then the game implemented it, I wouldn't expect anything from the game. I would just be okay, able to so, look back so and say, Saul, Saul is Saul has something here. He says they paid, um, the Survival Plus people fifteen thousand dollars for their mod. There we go. Oh, this is part of the contest. I forgot about this. Contest. Yeah, they've been doing these contests and everything, and like these, like the or Primitive Plus, not Survival Plus. I keep saying Survival Plus. Okay, so um, I, Primitive Plus and all these in the center and Primitive Plus, like these are huge projects that these people have worked so on. They're primitive, total reworks. Primitive Plus Survival was fifteen thousand dollars is what they won. The Alienware X fifty one desktop and a nine eighty Ti, and then uh, Valhalla. The map um, set in second place was five thousand dollars. The same thing, uh, the Alienware, and then the nine, uh, and then a nine sixty. So part of the contest, they they put in there as parameters: if you win, we may include it in the game. I mean, that's I'm sure that was in the fine print. You know, well, you if you win, you get fifteen thousand dollars, which is great. I mean, that's compensation. Yeah, that's pretty good. So there we go. Thank you for that. Uh, song. Yeah, because that's what I was wondering. Is like they've got to been doing something to re, you know compensate them because that's a lot of work making a mod like that i mean it's a lot of graphical time code time yeah very good so there we go I'd that's a mod for fifteen thousand dollars how about that yeah well you know and, and i think i think just that's i just think that's the whole point of building i don't know why you would build a mod in well in it hopes makes of... i mean this is makes total sense for arc to do this because they are not having to develop they're they're allowing other people to come up with the best ideas, right? This makes total sense to do because they're saying, you come up with an excellent idea. We will pay you because it would have cost us at least $15,000. Well, p- p- plus, this was a, plus this was a sponsorship with Alienware, so they weren't putting up $15,000 up front. I'm sure Alienware I'm sure was putting... They still would have. No, I'm sure I mean, they would have too, but Dell... Not that put... they would have paid a developer to say, hey, we want you to create a mod, and there's the risk that that's not popular after yeah. they were done. Like this takes all the risk out because either people are playing it or they're not. Yeah. And if they're playing it, it's popular. Okay, we'll give you fifteen thousand dollars. It's like it's like 
having a bunch of developers make stuff for you and if it happens to work you know then we'll pay you like yeah. that's pretty much what this is so um so that's that that'll that stuff will be in the game now um and then moving on to updates for arc 239.1 fixed an issue that was causing weapons and custom ammo to lose their uh to, so so guns with custom ammo to lose their ammo when moved into the dinosaur's inventory um so if you had a gu gun with custom ammo put it in the inventory you would lose the ammo um, which is yeah. no good they, it can be very expensive. Yeah, they fixed the um, activate sound effect on the chemistry table. That's been fixed. And it removed the cannon and cannonball Ingram from the primitive servers, which makes sense because uh, a cannonball uh, is not primitive. So and, Yeah, they, they don't have gunpowder <laughs> no, in so, Primitive Plus. No. So the problem is is that you couldn't fire the cannon anyways. So what was the point? Exactly. Um so there you go. That's 239.1 and then 239.2. Um, fix an issue with uh, the with loaded chem tables, crafting costs being too cheap. So that's been fixed. Uh, the Quetzal armor building. There was a Quetzal armor building exploit that has been fixed. Um, I would assume if you were making armor on the Quetzal, you know, put something on the Quetzal's platform, you'd probably be able to craft something differently. Yeah, or like it, it was making to where you probably make more than you could. Exactly. Or so, so that's been fixed. Um, it, so now that they've now uh, across all of the games, they reduced cannonball damage by fifteen percent uh, generally, and twenty five percent with respect to metal structures, and forty percent in uh, with respect to metal turrets, uh, and then added a small amount of obsidian as a crafting requirement for cannonball. So you need some obsidian if you're crafting those, and then fix the dire bear auto eating. Uh, Narco berries, which uh, could be <laughs> which could, it would fall asleep could be every... could be could be an issue if it was auto eating narcos. Um, because yeah, it would you're like, it oh, I got this great dire bear, and for some reason, every five minutes it falls asleep. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, it gets knocked out, and then somebody kills it. Um, so that's two thirty nine, uh, point two, and now you are up to date with uh with arc. And they should be. I think on the fourth is when their next uh, updates coming out. So they are May third. So on the third, they have another one. It's going to be 240 as their upcoming patch. Gotcha. So I, I, and that's going to have a couple new creatures. I think three new creatures are what they're aiming for. And the, the big thing that they're putting out is the ruins and explorer notes. So this is going to be starting to unroll or unravel the uh, lore of the game because people have been saying, like, what's the history? There's no lore out yet. Um, this is going to be the stories, the things that you can find. They're actually telling you why you're there, what's happened. So that'll be interesting. There you go. So that's All right. So arc. let's do, uh, we've got a game giveaway. Yeah. What are we giving away? All right. So this one is going to be Tesla grad, right? Oh. Tesla grad. Tesla grad. Um, yes. The keyword will be Tesla and I will type it in chat, all lowercase. So Tesla is the keyword. Um, and I'll actually give the Steam link so people can see that. It's very positive as far as reviews. Um, I was looking at this, and you were saying, actually, it looks like a Nintendo game. And it actually is on Nintendo and PS4 as well. But it looks like a, the art style on it, it looks like a very fun game. So if you're into platformer, indie, puzzle, like Metroidvania 2D <laughs> games, that's what this is. Exactly. So... That's uh, that's Tesla grad, and you can uh, enter the word Tesla in chat, T E S L A, uh, and get yourself into that uh, pool. So, um, what else do we have here, Brian? I'm just called you Ryan. Ryan. Uh, okay, so Russ, this is something that came out, and I don't think we really mentioned it too much. So, okay, go ahead. Let's um, take it away. In Russ, they released a couple weeks ago a female character. And one thing that was interesting is that they report now that sales skyrocketed after they added the female character model. And what's kind of odd is that it skyrocketed with Linux users. So the uh, us lonely Unix Linux users that are in their basements, um, <laughs> they, they for some reason they really wanted a female character in Rust and that caused them to buy the game now. So they uh, sales increased by 74% when they updated um, and the overall player count nearly doubled for a period. Okay. So, so this is what I have to say. So first okay. this is from Angadget who has been, who has been uh, historically 
inaccurate with some of this stuff. Was there anything else that they up that they did at the same time as the female? Because you fall into this thing where it's like, oh, we introduced the female and this plasma cannon that obliterates everything, and now we're going to attribute so, all of it being to the female being entered into the game. Was there yeah, anything so else they, that was added? They did a flamethrower. Uh, okay. Um, so they've added some other stuff. Yeah, so this, it was actually a pretty decent patch. So maybe, you're right, maybe they are you know, it's just, skewing it to say, hey, oh, it's all because of this, because... If because you know gamers what, are lonely and, and and don't have yeah, any female contact, uh, like these, and they're making fun of the Linux users. But why would Linux users care that there's a flamethrower? These are new purchasers of the game. I'm sure you know a lot of people came and but here's back the thing: and played that already owned. When it. you purchase a game, it's a, you don't it, it's a purchase on Steam, but you don't purchase it for Linux. You purchase it on Steam and you play it on whatever the hell platform you want. Yeah. Um, well, I don't buy this. I don't buy Engadget. This stuff is always okay, so, inaccurate. So they added in this one, they added the flamethrower. They added a water bucket so you could carry water and you could put it on your head for a helmet. I don't know. <laughs> um, they added a water barrel. Um, they did some performance tweaks. Uh, I mean, you know, it's that was the main thing. It was, you know, they did some things with weather. They fixed some weather things. You would love that. Yeah, I'm a big um, redid some sounds, but main, then, then they did. Yeah. The female character with eyebrows and all these things. That, I mean, so that was the, the flamethrower and the female character were the main things that they redid with that. So who knows? I mean, maybe, maybe something else. Did they put it on sale? Like there could have been some other things going into that, but that was their big thing is, there was a huge jump in, in players with that patch. And Gadget is about the clickbait. That's a damn fact. So is Kutaku. Yep. They're the worst. Um, yep. But that's interesting. And, and it's nice to see that a patch, which is, again, what H1Z when you do, they need to have a patch or an update or something that just skyrockets the numbers. Yep. Gets so, people playing again. Exactly. Exactly. So, and like on this next one, uh, they were going through and they they pretty much you know, came up with some female clothing concepts, male clothing concepts, which is odd in this is that like your character actually starts out very nude. <laughs> like, I guess there's, you can check a box to make it blurred or, or whatever, but you pretty much have naked characters. Maybe that's why they're playing with female characters. Um, but they, they added just some extra items to this patch, added salt water that you're not supposed to drink and um, some bags for carrying water. And it's just, they're really focusing on hydration, I think with this and food. Um, and then they added be benchmarks to the game, I guess, so they can kind of keep track of performance. So well, that's good. Yeah. So, and I, I think they're focusing a little bit more on the survival aspect, you know, with doing the water and, and, and focusing on the hydration and the food. So I think yeah. they're kind of now starting to go back to like, all right, let's keep this a survival game. Yeah, I think that's good. So, oh yeah, and that's pretty much, I mean, that's Rust. Um, that was the main main updates if you look at the bottom of those dev blogs now they're adding text that kind of shows you an intended change log because the other one that we were showing before for rust was showing the actual commits yes with with the uh, programmers comments so now they're having a more filtered version of the uh change log well, it just seems like something yeah this. something that's a little more something that's a little if you just want to skim and say all yeah. right what did they change here that they're not adding that at the bottom of the patch notes so exactly. that's kind of well, that's so, not, that's good news. Do we want to go on the next one, or do we want to do you want to give people a little bit more time? No, to I think I think I think whoever was was going to enter has entered. So Tesla, gotta. Uh, yep, Tesla. So all right, so I'm going to go ahead and roll here, and Trey BK. So Trey BK has won. Awesome. And I will send you a message that has your uh, your humble bundle gift link in there. Make sure that you check your others. Uh, inside of, of other Twitch. junk It'll or spam other, yep whatever yeah. you have it's going to be in there so <laughs> so stupid you're Which sending I don't a know why because you're sending like, a I, link i think that's what yeah does but it. they should make it to where if if i've been on here a while and i'm not constantly sending links that i don't automatically go there oh no that that wouldn't be appropriate so uh let's see so other than so that that's russ now we did have some uh Waterworld updates this week as well, which is everybody's yes. favorite game. Um, yep. H2O, so this is, and this is the new one. Um, this is the new game that's out of survival game, but it's based in a water world. 
Yeah, uh, it's not like full water world. No, but I it's think it's hide I think, hold out H two O. I think yeah. I think that's I think that's a cool little code name for it. Um, and I'll call yeah, it. Yeah, we that. call it. But I'm sure he doesn't want to get sued horribly, so he won't be calling. Is it water world an anyway. actual? Is water world like a licensed term? Yeah, water world is an actual movie with Kevin Costner. Have you ever seen this? No, I've never seen water world. An excellent movie. Okay, well, there's oh lots of there's lots of ex- so sheltered. There's lots. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm sheltered. Yeah, I live under a freaking rock. Brian, do I'm Brian, I'm doing a water pod- world. I mean. People. Well, some people say it's horrible, but it was a post-apocalyptic um, movie. Very good. Waterworld. When Waterworld. Did it, when did it come? At ninety-five. Now it's. Uh, Before it's got, you a, were born. it's got a six. It's got a six point one. Yeah, man, it couldn't have been yeah, that good. It was. It, no, it's actually good if you like post-apocalyptic movies. Oh, there you go. Uh, so speaking of uh, uh, hide and hold out, H two O. It's a really good Kevin Costner movie. Go check out Postman. That one was rated horribly. Put another post apocalyptic. You ever seen Postman? No. The Postman, I think it's called. No. Yeah. Why I mean, would... I I enjoyed it because I like that kind of movie, but it got horrible ratings. Okay. Well. Thanks All right, for, sorry, we'll thanks for badgering me. I appreciate it, Brian. <laughs> uh, so the improvements for H two O. This is a uh, zero point zero one point seven. Um, so the current anti cheat system has been improved. So that 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 is that is good. That is a good that is a good sign that we've okay, got anti cheat. This changes in the next patch notes. So um, keep keep that on short okay, memory. Oh, that's uh really foreshadowing there, Brian. Um, yes. Trying to secure the band command to avoid that anyone else uh, but admins can use. So making it so that if you're not an if you're not if you're not an admin, if you're not you're an admin, right you shouldn't be able to ban. ban. Um, command added button. to clean the band list in game, unban all, and then the characters. Um, the, the, the greater, greater than, than less, less than. than Brian, what are you doing? Oh here? yeah. You're in programming class. So, all well, right. I, I know. What, I mean, what do you think? I, I mean, I don't it's know not, what the hell those are. Program don't know what that actually is. They're like, well, I mean, right I, what arrow, about, left arrow? I mean, if you've ever used done math, you know, that's greater than or less than, um, yeah, well, you've that, never watched water world. Oh, so I didn't yeah. Know yeah what so I haven't watched a movie from the early nineties. I wasn't even born. Why? I mean, <laughs> whatever. Just because you're old and you've watched all these old movies, it doesn't it doesn't mean you have to badger me for it. Um, yeah. so you can't yeah, use those in chat anymore. You can't like put, put like weird stuff in there with the uh, l- no memes in in the H two O chat anymore using the uh, uh, greater than or less than two uh, symbols. So Brian, why don't you go ahead and announce the uh, is the next one the one where they get rid of the anti cheat? Okay. Yes. Yeah, so go ahead. I guess <laughs> I guess cheaters were running rampant. No, so I don't even... they've started. <laughs> they started. You know, whatever. I don't know if they were because they weren't saying this like they said current anti-G system. So they must have known. And they're, that's why they said current because they were making a note that this is temporary. Um, so they started integrating the basic modules for easy anti chi So that's in this one. Um, so an admin powers are now secured by a password. So only known by the server owner. Um, so you get this auto when you start up a server, you get an auto generated config uh, that has the password in it, I guess probably cause maybe the band command was being used by everybody. Um, and then they fixed some issues with, uh, you know, players not being seen and things like that. So, um, so the, they, they put it in here, discovered issue. The hackers can kill everybody still. So that was at the bottom of this. <laughs> That's but that was, at least they're being open about it. They're like, all right, we understand that hackers can just kill anybody they want to. Um, so then they put out, a patch and this is B so 0.01.71 B um, so they made some progress regarding the integration of easy anti cheat so I guess that's what they're going through is now that they were seeing that hackers are a huge problem in games um, they're integrating easy anti cheat into the game which is a you know it's a decent process so that's I'm sure they're going to keep on working that was done two days ago um, so they're going to keep on integrating that in there and hopefully that curves the problems of hackers just insta killing everyone. Yeah. Well, it's a step in the right direction. You know, it took H1Z1, uh, uh, two years to implement battle. I, you know, at least from the start they're uh, they're working on, on a, on a system that, that should, um, it, yeah. at least in the future be, you know, be better than writing your own anti-cheat because you know yeah. they're just just do not <laughs> write your own anti-cheat is what we've learned over time yeah yeah it's, just it's, don't, don't write your own simple, anti-cheat because it I mean, won't end well for take you take a look at arc yeah they integrated um they integrated an anti-cheat you know a, a third-party anti-cheat h1z1 has done it to whatever success you know all these major games don't make their own anti-cheat no, or if c- they do they make it its own product and they're like this is our anti-cheat 
Yeah, because it's kind they of don't a, just say we're going to just say put in the like no cheaters command in our programming and it's going to fix it. This yeah, doesn't the, work there's right. there's there's no reason to to reinvent the wheel, and that's with anti cheat. I mean, when you've got companies, but you need to think of it. And and these guys, at least they're catching it early. You need to think of it as early as possible to say, all right, you know, let's consider this anti cheat as like let's start it when we install the engine and <laughs> we start working on the game, like. Integrate anti cheat then. I mean, that'd be I, what I get out of this is is learn early, pick your anti cheat, and make it a core function of the game so that the cheaters, you're able to hold them back as much as possible. So yeah. Um, so that's uh, yeah. That's, so that's that's, that's H2O. I'd hold out H two O, but that's three patches this week. So that, you know they're keeping up with it. So that's good. Um, a game that is not now okay. So let's play the video. So the Black Death is a game that I purchased last week. Okay. Um, this is a little like one minute, 15 second video that they put out as their early access launch trailer. All right. And here we go. All right, that's uh. So I played it, there. day one, and um, which is so day one I could only pick up a few items. Okay. Like it wouldn't let you pick up any more items after you picked up a couple, uh, and then I tried to go into they had like a pub or whatever you could go into, um, and the door went I couldn't open it, so I couldn't actually go in and interact with anybody. I couldn't act, interact with any of the NPCs. Hmm. So that was day one. It's like okay, you know maybe there's bugs you know they didn't there's bugs so i went i waited a day you know they put out a patch and so i went the next day and i could open the door and so i went into the into the the place and i was able but i couldn't interact with anybody all right cool so i i'm like i'm gonna go run around and try to find something else like there was no players on the servers every single server said zero people online oh, nice. every single one of them this is three days after launch but they were having server issues because the server that i was initially on wasn't but i just thought it was odd i mean i don't i didn't see anybody else i i think i was the only person playing the game because the servers were crashing and i could somehow get into them um so i i was running around and i went and found this little uh little camp that had some npc bad guys there so i was like all right i'm gonna kill them and see what happens so i go up and kill them and they they spawn the second you kill them. Like the respawn happens. So you kill one and immediately another one pops up right there. It's a never ending so, battle. Yeah. So it ended up being like, I finally died because I'm just, I kill one and I, and it, it comes up. He's right there again. I kill one and another one comes up right there. It's like this. And the, the problem is, is there's three NPCs. So I'm just trying to keep up, but they're coming back. It's constantly three NPCs that I'm battling. So I've put it away for a couple of days. Um, Did they not do like, any testing before they released I just, this game? It seemed like they didn't do any alpha testing because everything was broken is this, when I went in. So is this beta or this is alpha? Alpha, yeah. See, this is... But, but it, nothing worked day one. Like, nothing this, that I tended to do. I couldn't even test the game. And this is... This all is I the, could do is run around and pick up three items. This is the unfortunate part of green light and, and early access and all this stuff is that... And 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 people, some people argue that oh, well, it's Alfie you should be able to play it. But when a game is unplayable, yeah, then it's not done. If I, I mean, if I can't even open on. a door day one. Like something's wrong. Like you, you should have done some internal internal tests to make it so that players could open a you, door. Did you pay for this game? 
Yeah, I paid. I paid like fourteen bucks. I would. I mean, I would have asked for a refund. Yeah, you should contact Steam. I mean, there's a difference between have between creating a game and creating it out for early access to test bugs, and then and then putting a game out. To, to which, in this case, what it seems like is they were trying to just make some money, quick capital up front. I mean, how yeah. the hell, how the hell can you not interact with the door? Yeah, Man, it's a, there's no logic there. It, like. Like do like that one game did where you're do releasing like every other tests. game where you created we do closed like tests. Well, what you could do is say, hey, we need some early alpha testers because we want to test this on 500 people, right? Or even less. Say we want to test this with 50 people. We're going to give you the opportunity, you know, to to purchase this, and you'll be one of the first 50 testers. And test it with one mostly, person. Well, yeah, but can you, inter can you interact with a door or not? I mean, come on. But then you could take those people and say, we are, our developers are going to be on call for you. Like we are going to be like your private repair team. So we want you 50 people to play and tell us what you find. And, you know, it may be broken for a couple of days, but, you know, we're going to work on the list that you give us. It's, it's like the test where these major companies, they'll say, all right, we're having a weekend. Like we're going to play for a weekend, do an open weekend test. Yeah. Like let people download it, let them play for a weekend. Don't sell it. Like do that test where people come in, play for the weekend. It lets them do the demo. Um, and then it goes away, you know? And then once you've tested a couple of times and seen that you can't open doors, you can't interact with NPCs, NPCs instantly respawn. Um, you know, all, everything was wrong that I can imagine could have been wrong other than I could run around. Hmm. Like I could move around. That was it. That, yeah. That just seems odd. So, um, that's black death now. So that's black. Death. And I keep hoping, I mean, I'm hoping it gets better, but like, there's no storyline. Like, what do you do right now? You can buy a house and like, I'm a guy who trades stuff, but I don't even know who do I trade with? Like, it just they they need to get farther along in the process before releasing. Their I, th game. I think they may have released it a little too early. Like they don't have the core of the game in yet. They have no core of the game in yet, from what you've just described. Yeah, I, mean, I, I can't even figure out. Like I can't even think. What am I going to go do? Like I can't even think of what to do. Like I, I'm looking around for what am I supposed to do? Is this game on Steam? Yes. Oh, this needs to be taken off Steam immediately. And that's the problem is I just, I don't even know what to do in the game. Like I go in and I run around. There's no, I, I don't see any other people. Like, I just don't even know what to do. Like, is I'm this the around. game that green man gaming backed and this was going to be their like, what a joke. What a and joke. So what? A, I mean, it's, it's just kind of frustrating. That's good. It's, and I'm glad green man gaming threw their name on this piece of junk. That's ridiculous. How can you release a game and charge somebody $14 for it? Knowing damn well, it doesn't work. Knowing damn well, it doesn't work. And that's well, that's absolutely that, that's ridiculous. the thing. CHBCK is saying, well, the serv the doors are server side. But the problem is, is the day that the servers were working is when I couldn't open the doors. When the do when the servers, when everyone else wasn't able to get online, that's when the doors worked for me. It just it it just made no sense. Like the whole thing just didn't make any sense. I couldn't even tell like what part of this is broken. It was so broken. That's that's that. I couldn't say like this piece doesn't work. Like I'm not sure if I was running in some offline mode. I mean, you know, maybe that's what it was. Maybe I was running in a local mode that wasn't really communicating with the server correctly. Like, I couldn't even tell. I was like, is this the game? Yeah. Oh, that's so, who knows? It's un unexcusable if you're charging $14 for Usually a game. Usually when, when you're offline, like, you can't, like, you run off into the distance forever. That yes. shows you how few server-side checks they're doing. First of all, there's a problem. If I can run around and interact with the map a ton, that shows that the server-side checks are almost non-existent because it never checked with the server to say, oh, wait, I'm, I'm supposed to actually to ask you if I can do this. That means cheating is going to be horrible. Get because ready. People will send whatever they want to the server and it's never going to ask any different. <laughs> well, there you go. Get ready. So, all right. Anyways, we'll see. The Black Death. I keep hoping. It's one of those ones I have on my list that maybe someday <laughs> it will it will turn. So now we've got uh, we got miscreated in here. They, they did a developer video. Um, yeah, I mean it's it's a it's a two minute twenty. I don't know if you really want to play. I don't it, think they're we pretty much play just talking. No, that's fine. They're they're talking. This was them being interviewed by CryEngine because okay. you know they're one of the big people in CryEngine. So he was pretty much talking about some of the um, technologies that they introduced. Thank you know thanks to CryEngine. Uh, and uh, for me, I keep looking at back at a lot of these things to say, oh, you know, all these things are automatic. 
you know, it was we just easily were able to integrate this feature. Are all things that H one Z one struggling with, like internal lighting? You know how that was a big thing they keep pushing. Oh, yeah. we have it to where when you walk into a building, like the lighting changes. This is something that is oh, it's built in the Cry Engine. So when you know we just were able to to take advantage of that. Um, you know, they did talk a little bit about the AI which they're integrating, which right now is still not great, but you know it's a new system they just put in and they're tweaking it. So I understand that. Um, and then he did some other phrase that he said it so quick in his internal developer term. I couldn't even catch what it was. I tried to Google it by the sound, but it sounded out. I had no idea nice. what he said. So I was like, I tried to look that up. He was like, Oh, we yeah, we had this other great thing and it was wonderful. And I was like, what was that? <laughs> like I even replayed it multiple times. And I was like, I have no idea what he's even saying. So they have some other great feature technology in there that, I'm sure CryEngine understood what he said. What he said because it's some technology that's in their engine. Cool, yeah. So, there we yeah. go. But that's pretty much what that was in the base building. But a lot of that is thanks, you know, all these things that their H1 and I, I. That's the main reason I wanted to do this, is to point out all these things that we keep bringing up about H1Z1, like the base building's no good. Um, you know, just all these problems should be the engine doing all this stuff, like taking care of it. That's the point of the engine. And if they had an engine like CryEngine or Unreal, they could integrate a module or have it be more automated to where they wouldn't be spending six months, a year, yeah. integrating those simple features. Exactly. It would be it would be done in a month, two months. It's the benefit of using a, a, an engine that's widely circulated and has already got a lot of assets. Um, it's one of the benefits. Yeah. Now, Unturned did... Um, did, did did some updates this week. So they uh, so a few additions for the Unturned game. Uh, they added a water tank, uh, storing water, a fuel tank, storing fuel. Added a hot mystery box with four uh, mythical effects. So if you're... I have no idea. If you're into <laughs> mythical things, I guess you can check that out. Maybe, maybe uh, well, maybe... <laughs> Yeah, maybe little like unicorns come out. Yeah. Unicorn Joe would love it. Yeah, I'm not, I don't know. I don't Mythical even know. What, I don't know what, what a myth. I don't know what is classified as. I don't know everything that's involved in the mythical effects uh, genre, but um, it's a hot mystery box, though. Yeah, it is. Um, and then added 21 new uh, playtime drop cosmetics. Added 14 new playtime drop skin patterns. Added context uh, action for quickly. Uh, stripping attachments, those are from the guns. Added a context action for crafting bandages, so you'll be able to do that uh, a little bit faster. Added context action for converting plants into seeds, so get the uh, seeds back from the plants that you plant. Added a context action for wearing clothing, and then added basic interactable object documentation. So now they're in the chat, they're saying that they need to add have more things tintable. Yes, they uh, and they all actually if I forgot they they had to, forgot to add that they added uh, tintable uh, mystery hot mystery boxes with mythical effects. Yeah, That's tintable a, hot mystery boxes with yeah, tintable effects. Tint, yeah, tint, tintable, tintable, tintable hot mystery box with tintable effects uh, coming soon to H one Z one. So that's unturned. Um, so Fallout, Fallout or so Fallout four is. I'm, I have the. Uh, I have to enter my birth date in here. Let's let's do that. Yes, so because it's so advanced adult. Uh, so, you know, they, ha I have the season pass on yes. Fallout. And so I get all these updates, but this is a regular update. So Fallout 4, this is, this part here is the 1.5 update. Um, so they're adding support for the upcoming add-on, which is going to be something either you have season pass or you purchase separately for Far Harbor. Um, and then they put in some additional gameplay optimizations. And it, what you can do is if you want to have some of the latest updates for Fallout, you can go in and check a box that puts you into the beta. Cause that's what I did for mine. Because um, a lot of these features they're testing, um, I went in and checked the box, and it gives you the early release updates, so you can kind of see what's coming up um, in this. So they'll have the survival mode, which will be fully released with the 1.5 update, and then they'll be releasing on the Xbox One and PlayStation 4. So um, in development, they mention here a creation kit. So this is going to be used, as people were saying before in chat, they were saying that, you know, what really keeps a game going is mods, like especially an old game. You can keep a game going for years without the developers putting a huge in a ton of, uh, of, of work into it by having mod ability. On yeah. I mean, it. think so, about fallout three. People are playing fallout three. Literally. There's still people playing fallout three. They're still yeah. playing the mods for fallout three and new Vegas, yep. not, not new Vegas so as much, but they're putting, at, they're putting actual mod support into it. So when it goes to um, consoles, the, the Xbox one and the PlayStation, yeah. they actually can have the mods in those ones as well so 
but yeah, that's going to be uh, that's going to be the one point five update, which, as I said, is the survival update. They're going to have a much more difficult uh, method of play and then a bunch of fixes. So, and then for the open beta, if you want, we'll have a link in here that if you want to be a part of the open beta, um, it's just instructions and it's got a, a nice video. Um, I mean, it's a two two minute five second video, but it's mostly just them talking about the mod system and, and what they're going to be integrating. So, uh, but they do have in there the steps for, um, for getting to be a part of the steam beta. And then also for their launcher that they have, which will let you get into their creation kit. So, um, that link will be in our show notes. Yeah. Now, um, Brian and I, and, uh, and some other people have thrown around the idea of introducing some other, uh, gaming news stories into the show. Um, and I'm not sure how they're all going to go over, but um, is there any of these that you want to start off with? Well, how about, do we want to announce the game giveaway now? Or, do, I mean, do you want to start it now or do you want to do it after this part? Uh, we're going to cover all of these? Yes. Well, we can do however many, but I'm just saying, how much time do you want to give them to be able to enter for um, Dark yeah, Souls? Let's, let's just do it then. Let's do it now. Okay, because that way we can give them plenty of time to yeah. enter, so... All right, so the code for this one will be dark, all lowercase. It has to match. So if you don't do lowercase, if you put a capital D on this, it, I'm sorry, my program somehow does not understand that. And I haven't gone in and changed the code for it. I didn't write it. So, uh, But put dark in there. This is for Dark Souls 3. Thank you to um, Unicorn Joe. If you want to check out his Twitch channel, you go to twitch.tv forward slash Unicorn Joe with just the J-O on the end, no no E. <laughs> Very so, easy to spell if you want to get there. He used to have not a unicorn not a Joe. Not a unicorn Joe, but, yeah. But he, he started accepting who he, he was. He upgraded it, yeah. Yeah, and so now he's officially Unicorn Joe because all of his things had unicorns all over him anyways. And one thing I linked to him last week was um, Humble Bundle had, for their books, a bunch of, uh, the, what are those, um, My Little Ponies, Oh, yes. yeah. My All the ponies. comic books for those. Oh, nice. So I was like, Joe might like these. There you go. <laughs> so I linked to him on, on Twitter, and uh, I'm, I'm sure he's already purchased them, and that's probably what he's doing right now is reading all of the uh, My Little Pony oh, Good for him. Um, books. Yeah, got to do what you got to do. So <laughs> Yeah, Joe, he just said in chat, I so got that bundle. There you go. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Do, do, do you want to cover everything in here, or do you want to just cover a few of them. So let's go. I mean, let's go ahead and go, go to some point. Um, so, all right. So one thing I wanted to announce is that Mojang, who was the original creator of Minecraft, he released a free game and I, I'm all about games. You know, you know that now, um, just to be clear here, notch no longer works for Mojang. So this is not a, no this is not Notch's game. This is Mojang, the company. Okay. Sorry. Um, isn't notch Mojang. No, uh, he was, he does not work for Mojang anymore. It's to, um, Mojang stuff. Oh, okay. Henrik Peterson. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. So, yeah. Um, so this he bought is, some this like is crazy, like that two point he left and he bought some crazy, like $2.3 million house. Out and in California. he made yeah. scrolls, which came out a yes. while ago. Yeah. He's only into that. So this is, this is by Mojang, the company that was, was him and then is now its own company. So, um, but this is going to be, it's called crown and Can council. So if you want to check that out, we'll have a link to it. You can go on Steam. It's free to play. Uh, I mean, it's it's different. Like they're into the pixel pixel art, whatever. Um, you know, they're a big enough company. I mean, I don't know. It's kind of its own art thing, but I like it when they kind of do pixely, but with some clear aspects to it. Like this is 100% pixely. Yeah, I'm, I I think the I've kind of the pixel thing has kind of worn off. I mean, every freaking game is oh we're pixels. I mean, Whoa! It's, okay, you know. like the game that we gave away earlier. It's kind. It was kind of a mix. It was. Like it, is it, really it, it was aspect. a fancy, um, fancy art style. That, that see, worked. I like that. I I just I don't like it when they go a hundred percent. Like it doesn't need to be. I went. I lived through this era. Like <laughs> I, there's so much, you know, throwback that I like to have, but. I do like it when not all of it's pixely. Like, yeah. Brent put some of the feel in there, but there's a reason that we're buying the remastered versions of games and we're not playing the original, you know, King's Quest. <laughs> we want the remastered. Exactly. Because it was so pixely. Back then it looked great, but it doesn't look good anymore. So, yeah. So now we got some uh, Steam uh, kind of info in from 2015. 
Um, and I'm going to cover a few games on here that we've talked about in the past. So uh, this is top games by estimated revenue. Um, and yep. this is this was uh, April through December of, of 2015. Um, and the, the few ones that jump out uh, here are Rocket League, which is a big one that we've played before. Uh, that came in at number six. Mad Max uh, was number eight. That was another big one. Uh, Arma 3 was in at 11. Ark Survival Evolved uh, was on 14th on this list. And then H1Z1 in here, sales, just about a million, $952,000 in sales. Um, so you can average out, say, about a million buckaroos they made on... Uh, yeah. Made on Steam last year, which really makes you sit back and Where wonder that money go? what the hell's going on. Plus, this yeah, remember this happened? doesn't include keys or crates or Is anything. It, I mean, else. You look, they're making a lot of money on keys. Well, I mean, clearly, I mean that's how they funded the Invitational last year. The price pool was, you know, however many thousands of dollars, and and it was funded by twenty five percent of key sales. So they're making bank on this game. Um, and the total, so it's just that that's. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. No. I totally got that wrong. I'm sorry. They made eleven million dollars in revenue. I was reading the wrong column. They had nine. They had about a million sales. Revenue of that was eleven point five million dollars. Uh, in that, so my my statistics were were wrong with that. Yeah, we forgive you. My bad. Now this this, this uh, chart was um, sh shown to me by Supa, who watches our show. So thank you for giving that information to me. Because for me, I looked at it and I was like, I look at the games that are around it, and a lot of those games are AAA titles, and I don't view H1Z1 as a AAA title. No, but it's up there. Isn't that funny? Yeah, it's just it's odd to me. They made all that money. Killing Floor Two, like I don't know. I well, never. Played I thought that it. was a free to play game. To be honest with you, I think I have a copy of it. I, no, I don't. It's not free to play. I don't no. have it. Hmm. I've seen it, but I but I I don't know. Maybe that was a great game. I've never played it. Yeah, neither um, have I. But like Ark, uh, Arma Three, which mainly probably because of Daisy, you know that's the reason it's up there. Mad Max did very well, number eight. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, Rocket League is number six. I mean that's high up there. Fallout, Grand Theft Auto Five, like those are huge title games. And the fact that they're up there with them, like if you put a screenshot side by side of Grand Theft Auto next to H One C One, I mean come on. Yeah. Not close. So that's um, that's some Steam stats from uh 2015 now you have a kickstarter on here for a uh, a new first person shooter um and you said something about the developers for this so it's called All black right. room and it's called black room a new fps now I'm, I'm not saying that people go and get this it's really up to you uh, you know but i just i thought it was interesting because these are two developers that were from very big games so one of them worked on doom um and I'm trying to find the exact uh, where they, they put it on here. But it, it's them coming back and it, coming back from huge studios and coming on to Kickstarter. And they don't really have any gameplay. Like, this is all concept art. And so this will be interesting to see because they, they're not actually presenting any game yet. Like, they're, they're writing down theories. And I'm, I'm kind of curious, is this enough? The fact that these guys came from... Um, one of them worked on Wolfenstein 3D and Doom. So that's the art director, um, Adrian Carmack. And then John Romero, uh, who released, he's released like 130 games. Um, he said 111 of those have been published commercially. So, I mean, he's got experience. You know, he started back in 1979. Um, so, I mean, you know, so he's got experience. But do you think that's enough with with how saturated the market is with games nowadays. Do you think that that's going to be enough to get them seven hundred thousand dollars? Yeah, I don't this? know. I've, I've I've been kind of turned off by the whole uh, Kickstarter early access. I mean, stuff. are they coming in a little bit too late to where people are like, oh, another Kickstarter? Because you got to think, it's been thirty-one days to go. Like, are they giving them a couple extra days? Isn't it usually always thirty-one days? It starts at thirty-one days. Yeah, but it's been a couple days, and it's there's still thirty-one days. Like, is this some new magic? No, it needs to be funded by May 27th. But it says 31 days to go. Yeah, but they released it like a two day, two or three days ago. It's just where this still says 31 days. It's been more than 24 hours since they released no, it. That, so. it said, no, it said 32 days when they first released it. 32? Okay. So yeah, it's, 32 it's, or 33. Okay. Yeah, 32. They right, released so it yesterday. 
So 31 days to go. They're at $107,712. They got to make $700,000 to fund it. Yeah. But they've got 1,853 backers. Uh, so this will be interesting. Uh, it's, it's all concept. It's a first person shooter that's based in a simulation. So they pretty much can get away with whatever they want using that game mechanic, right? They're not yeah. limited to any real world thing because it's some simulation gone wrong type of thing is what I've get, gathered out of it. So yeah, this will be this will be one to keep an eye on if you're into that sort of thing. But I haven't, you know, being that they don't have any actual gameplay, I don't think they've done anything other than draw pictures so far, because it's not going to be out till the end of 2017, I think. Yeah, that's a concern. No, winter, no, winter of 2018. Nice. So I, I, you know, I think they're just saying, hey, is this going to fund? We're not even gonna, you know, these guys have done enough. They're like, we're not even gonna touch it unless it funds. Yeah. There you go. So, um, all right. Do we want to? Do we want to? Oh, we got one more thing on here. Um, all right. So this is this is another game engine news. So this is released by Crytek, and they are actually they licensed to um, film developers to be able to integrate their Cry Engine into what they call Film Engine. And so this is going to, they're trying to get it to where their engine is used more for making movies and things like that, get into that whole world. So this is CryEngine. Um, they're calling it Film Engine. You can go to filmengine.com if you want to check it out. Uh, but yeah, it, it, I mean, if you're into making scenes and things like that, because remember they did that one release with CryEngine where they were, they had that alien or not yeah, that, alien, that video oh, thing that they showed yeah i think that was kind of hint at this yeah like I, I would saying, say I, it, cut scenes and everything that's exactly that was what my mind went to originally yep so i i think that this that was more of a teaser of hey you know we got it done you know this is going to be integrated and now they're creating something just so that the people making the films don't have all the game acts aspects to it because they don't need all that stuff they're just making scenes so yeah, there you go. That's uh, that's film edge. You can get that. You can get more information on their website or our show notes at infectionpodcast.com. So we're going to do uh, current players, and then we'll roll. Uh, so you can enter the word dark in chat, D-A-R-K, uh, to possibly win a copy of Dark Souls 3, thanks to uh, thanks to our friend uh, Unicorn We've got 33 Joe. people that have entered so far. Yeah, so, so keep entering. You'll have, you have a few more a few more minutes here to enter that, so dark in chat. Let's get into it. Current players currently playing H1Z1 combined 10,528, the 24 hour peak for that 17,134, and the 70 peak 20,484. Let's break it down by game. Start off with Just Survive, currently playing that 3,849. The 24 hour peak was 5,649, and then the 70 peak 7,518. Moving on over to King of the Kill, uh, better numbers than than uh, Just Survive there. Currently playing that 7,094, the 24-hour peak for that 12,074, and then the 14 or the seven-day peak 14,062. Now uh, moving over to Ark. This is Ark Survival Evolved. Currently playing that 30,262, the 24-hour peak for that was almost 50,000. Uh, 49,072, yep. and then uh, the 70 p for this is just insane, 62,215. Now, And they just broke 3 million sales of their game. Go. Now, this is, this is the unfortunate part. So they did that big just uh, survival of the fittest event at PAX, and uh, the numbers don't seem to reflect it, at least not yet. Currently playing that 1,143. The 24-hour peak for that, 1,972, and then the seven-day peak, 2,727. So the numbers for, for a survival uh, of the fittest, at least at this point, now, have not been affected by. If that. you look at their total owners and players, like that is a consistent, as far as the total owners, it's going up. People are downloading it, but if you look at like the total players, it's consistently going down like the two weeks, well, like let, the let, number of people that play in the last two weeks is consistently going down. Total owners and total downloads are two different things though. If you own, so, if you paid for ARC, you get survival evolved, correct? Or is yeah, so so that's everyone who's either downloaded it or had had it before. Like, mm, I'm not sure about that. It's a free to play game. That's the thing is it's a free to play game. It's a, so is it a separate, have, it, it's so a it's, separate DAXE. So okay. it's, it's a separate download. So this is people that have actually now after gotcha. the fact gone and downloaded it. Gotcha. So it's they're they're at 
almost one and a half million people that have downloaded it. Um, and it says that the total players is about 730,000, but the players in the last two weeks is now at like 207,000. So that's been slightly going down like every week slightly. So we'll have to see if, if people keep playing this game because the players, the total number of players has been consistently dropping on this. So, yeah, which is unfortunate. Uh, ho- I was hoping the PAX East would kind of bring that up, but I guess not. And then yeah. finishing off here with Rust, 19,737 people currently playing that. The 24-hour peak, 34,328. And the seven-day peak, 45,879. And that is current players. Now, yes. um, I guess we can roll, and then uh, we'll get on with the tip of the week. All right, so let's go ahead and do our final. And this is for, as we said, Dark Souls 3. All right, so Arrowhead 27 has won. So, um, Nick, you'll have to... Yes. So on this one, because it's a Steam gift, you'll have to make sure that you contact Nick on Steam. So if you go to be a part of our Steam group and you send him a message... Um, actually, what you can do is... If you want to send me... I'll give you his contact link. You can send him a message now so that he can contact you to arrange to make sure it's the right person on Steam. Yes, please please do that if you... Um, well, you mean you're obviously in chat. So... Um, yeah, there. Yeah, Arrowhead. If we're not friends on Steam, um, look me up on the Steam group, and, and I'll get that to you. Hopefully. You might want to send a message right now. Ju- you know, when the show's done, just to get the do it now. Because if you do it, if you do it later, I'm not going to get to it until later. So if you want the game now, uh, do that while you can. Brian, you do a segment every week. Yes. Uh, all right. So this is tip of the week where I go through, and it's either a tip that's related uh, just to either a survival game or one of the games we're playing, or it's a general overall tip. Um, this one, I'm sorry if it's if it's a little rude. I sent Nick a message earlier saying, hey, is this one okay? Um, well, we'll find out. So this is my tip of the week. All right, so in this tip, I wanted to tell you guys, learn what a game is capable of because Nick and I, I mean, I get really frustrated. Like, why aren't they doing this in a game? Uh, So look at the engine and the technology that's behind the game that you're looking at playing. You know, this may be a game that you don't even have yet. Um, So when dealing with alphas, especially, uh, you never know what you're going to get. I mean, we talked about, uh, you know, a game that that I just bought this past week, The Black Death. I don't really know what engine it's on. I don't know what it's capable of. You know, they may never go past where they're at today. So I need to do some research, figure out what they're running on. So when you look at a game, if they're built on an old engine, it's going to have very le- very limited capabilities. Like, it, it, you know, it may be stuck in DirectX 9, which as games are becoming consistently DirectX 11, DirectX 12, you know, and they start releasing future ones. If you get a game that's stuck in the original DirectX 9, it's not going to look like these new games coming out. And unless they do, do a total rework in the engine, it never will. So, um, you know, DirectX 10 gives you any DirectX 10 Plus gives you the fancy lighting and the textures and and even the movement of hair and and a lot of these capabilities that we're looking at it saying, oh, this looks great. That is the engine making it capable of doing that. So. Um, it will not be capable. So these older engines are not going to be capable of capable of doing what you see these AAA games doing today. So before you buy, and don't be afraid to go look and say, "Hey, all right, what engine is this game built on?" If it's built on an engine that you've never heard of, you're taking a risk. Uh, you know, if if the the company is saying, "All right, this is built on the latest version of Unreal," or this is built on CryEngine, I mean, three is not bad, but if you know if it's built on CryEngine five, you know that they're really thinking about. All right, we want to get the most out of this game possible, uh, and they're mo- they have the most room to grow from. So um, it's very possible that when you see an alpha of the game when it comes out, that may be as good as that game is ever going to get graphics wise, even maybe physics wise. Like they may have put in whatever it's capable of doing. And it's not going to grow beyond that. So just be prepared and, you know, go do your research. Learn what the different engines are. Learn what the technologies are. Um, you know, like, what is the difference between a DirectX 9 game and a DirectX 12 game? 
go and learn because you'll be really surprised that when you when some of these games, you know, they may be getting as much as they can out of that old engine, but that's going to be it. Some of these games are just barely tapping, you know, what is capable right now, and they're going to grow from there. So don't be afraid yeah. to do some research. Yeah, do some research, but I, I, I'm going to have to disagree with you on part of that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't not buy a game because of the engine it's on. Um, if if it's one that you're thinking is going to grow beyond what it is right now, I don't know. I feel like that's very broad. Um, okay, let's say let's take for instance um, the Black Death. Let's say it's built on an old engine. Okay, um, you know. And, and we look at the graphics and they're not bad. Well, if I'm expecting that they're going to have some really fancy lighting and the scenes are going to be beautiful, it, it may never. Like if, if it's built on an old engine, which I don't think it is, um, but if it's built on an old engine, it may be that they've gotten every little bit out of that engine they can to make it look how it looks. You know, I mean, it doesn't look bad. Possibly. But, but you know, if they were working in the latest versions of CryEngine or, or Unreal, like they can bring in physics and they can bring it it's got a great modular system yeah to where even if they don't have the programmers that are capable of it they can bring in a system that will take care of the day night cycle that will integrate weather for them they need to have enough capabilities to be able i to get that but i maintain it yeah i, I get that I, I just i don't know about judging a, a, a i mean that's literally the definition of of judging a book by its cover when you you know decide if no, you no, no. Buy or not by a game based i'm, on I'm judging i'm judging the book on the paper it's written on to say whether or not this game or sorry, this book is going to stay up and, and be quality. If, if it's paper thin, like a magazine, I may not want to buy that book because you know, it's going to fall apart on me. I mean, that's, that's the closest thing. Yeah, you know, the, know. Whether the contents, you can make a great contented game on an old engine. If you're going for story and maybe mechanics, because Mario was great as far as mechanics, right? Yeah. Well, the debatable, but yeah. Okay. Well, you're wearing a Mario shirt right now, so yeah. But the Mario games were—I mean, those the Mario games on the N64 were pieces of shit. They were awful. Well, I'm talking about the original Mario. If you look at that, I mean, that was before engines existed. Yeah. And and you know that game it was all about mechanics. Well, it, that's what you're going to get. You're not going to take that original Mario platform, and you're not going to get. I do not co-sign on this. I, I do not Mario. co-sign on this tip. I don't know. I just I don't co. I don't know. I don't buy it. I, I, see, I'm all about, I'm, but I'm all about the immersion. You're getting there. I'm all about the immersion, and I just see that there's so much more capability of immersion in the new engines, to where it feels like, like even they were talking about the lighting. When you walk into a house and you've been out in the sun, like everything seems darker, like it does in real life. That as you're walking in the house and your eyes adjust, like the light gets brighter. Like those little details for me make a difference. You're not going to get that really without, as you're seeing with H1Z1, a ton of work of them trying to integrate it now because they never put it into their original games. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing is all these features they're having to program in by themselves. If they would, if, if H1Z1 originally would have been put on Unreal, all they'd have to be doing is converting up to the, the more recent versions. They just have to be changing their assets. I just feel like this is, this is a situation different. where you get into where... Every, every you assume every game on Unreal is going to be great because they've got a good engine. No, no, no. Half so of it, not, I, it's, but yeah, but it, the, no, but I get that. The, but half the of it is the engine. The game. But exactly. If, I mean, you could have you could be running on un, Unreal, um, uh, Unreal twenty six, and if you just got a crappy development team, it doesn't matter what engine you're on. Well, and that's the thing is, it, I look at it as if you're going to run a race, like I feel like when you're running on a really old engine, you're really shackling yourself, and you're making it that much more difficult to get farther ahead or even I mean take a car example if you want to if I want to have a really fast car and I want to have it like look cool I better put in a good engine you know yeah. because I sure I can tweak this this really slow and weak engine I don't know on this little car as much as I can but it's only going to go so fast and it's only going to sound so good you know what you if you if you put like a 428 or a 440 block into a Dodge that is going it's it's you don't have to do all these tweaks to it by itself. It's good. And then if you want to take it to where you're trying to get, you know, under 10 seconds on a racetrack, then you go and do tweaks to it and you get that much farther ahead. But you're, you're really shocked. Well, we'll have to, we'll have to agree to disagree on this one. All right. Cause I'm just, Whatever. I, I just, I, I don't know. I'm, I, I, I can't be that quick to, to judge a game based on, based on its engine. Well, solely. Is do some research. If you think the game yeah. looks really cool, at least look at the engine they're on and see if it's, if, if they're capable of going beyond where they're at today. Yeah. Mechanics aside, like people can make cool things happen in really old. That's that. And I think that's the point is if you, if you, if you, 
you know, not buying games because of the engine, you could be, I don't know, you could be shooting yourself in the foot. Yeah. So who knows? Well, we'll see. That's a, a, but that's for me. That's been, I mean, that's been something we've been dealing with. Like, as, as we say, oh, this new engine is going to come out for H1Z1, and then we realize it never would. For me, that was like, okay, well, I don't think they're going to move too much beyond. They're, they're doing some, as much, if you look at what their artist updates are, like that's just, they're doing a lot with that DirectX 9 engine. They're doing a great job on DirectX 9, but it's like, why do you want to take a Pinto and and, and put a you know put a turbo into it? Like, yeah, what know. is the point? Alrighty, well, you you I don't know. Okay, I I, I, right. I don't know. I don't I don't I don't, I don't agree, but that's that's fine. That's the whole point. Um, yep. we don't always have to agree. No, and that's that's the that's a good point about this. So. Um, I think that is it. Um, the, definitely uh, check out the Steam group. We're doing uh, H1Z1 KOTK, King of the Kill, Friday night, 9.30 Eastern. Um, just hop in the TeamSpeak. It's infectionpodcast.com. And uh, we'll be doing that. Brian, anything else for you, sir? Yeah, if you, well, I'll give out contact info. If you want to uh, find me, go ahead and go to buydetect.com or at Boise Computer. And if you're not on our Steam group, as he said, make sure you join our Steam group. Uh, it's an excellent way to find and join us on Friday night because we will be playing some King of the Kill. And look, put it in your schedule. Every Friday night, you know, unless uh, if something comes up, I guess we could announce that we're not doing it, but we're always going to have it in the schedule so you can plan ahead, check out a, a, about a week beforehand and see what game we're going to be playing. So it's all ready on your computer. Already awesome. Thank you very much, Brian. Um, of course, check out our website. Um, uh, actually, here we go. It's uh, s- thanks, uh, Nisco. It's steamcommunity.com forward slash groups forward slash infection podcast. So if you and if you go to our website, it's on it, the upper it's on right there, too. there should be a link that goes there as well. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we'll send a steam. No- it, there will be a steam notice that goes out now that it's a scheduled event. There is a steam notice that'll go out. Um, and Lang on it and Saul are will both have access to do that. So they'll be doing that stuff. Um, follow us on Twitter. Brian and I have really kind of picked up our game on Twitter. Where Brian was haggling some developers today, I saw, because he's got nothing yeah. better to do when he's at school. School yeah, yeah, yeah. is badgering yeah, mis- what, miscreated developers or something. Yes. Uh, just badgering them for no reason. Um, other than that, uh, you can, of course, you can go to our website. It's infectionpodcast.com. Uh, uh, again, live. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, the podcast app thing again. If you are, were unable to download our show last week, uh, send go to our website. It's infectionpodcast.com. Go to the contact page and send us a, a contact request with the app that you use, so that we can. Yeah, that way. That way, because right now it will be working, and that's the problem. Is if it wasn't working, we didn't need to know which one it is, so we can contact those apps and say, hey, you need to upgrade your technology, so that if I turn the feature back on in six months that they will be working exactly so that's uh so just just so you know that um you'll be good you'll be good to go with that so guys that is going to do it for episode 67 of infection the survival podcast my name is nick craig at nicholas m craig is my twitter infectionpodcast.com is the website and we'll see you next week for infection have a great week everybody